Hi, this is Phil Newman from Longevity Technology, and I'm joined today by Tom Benson, the founder of Mitrix Bio. Hey, Tom. Hi, how are you doing, Phil? Yeah, great. So, um, Tom, obviously, your sweet spot is mitochondrial dysfunction and mitochondrial medicine. There's been a lot of discussion, of course, about the diseases that are going to be potentially cured beyond even the systemic level of uh, addressing uh, longevity and aging diseases. So could you maybe just talk about that for us? Well, the, the thing about mitochondrial degradation is that it affects all of the body. And that's what aging is. It's everything is affected. So in many ways, there's too many targets. It's it's uh, almost sounds like we're proposing something miraculous. But again, it, that is what mitochondrial energy decline does. It affects everything. And before I forget, by the way, please remember that these are hypothetical um, solutions only. This has not been tested in human beings yet. It is still just potential cures. It has not been approved by regulators. So please remember that while watching this presentation. But there are, there's about a dozen diseases that are really easily identified right away in the different parts of the body. Um, of course, if you uh, look at the brain, for example, there's Alzheimer's, there's Parkinson's, there's Huntington's, all these neurodegenerative diseases. If you look at the eyes, there's retinal degeneration, which would be AMD, uh, wet AMD or dry AMD. If we go to the heart, there's, of course, cardiac disease, weakness of the heart muscle, uh, lungs, COPD, emphysema. If you go to other organs, liver, kidney, dysfunction, all of those things. Then if we go to the immune system, of course, the immune system is a, is a significant part of the entire body. And the immune system, according to our research, is dramatically affected by mitochondrial weakness. So... <clears throat> Another one, of course, is the face um, and the skin, which loses its, its uh, plump fat and loses its skin tone. This is based on aging and based on mitochondrial decline. And then, of course, there's muscles, tendons, and just general strength, what we call frailty or sarcopenia. So tell me more about how mitochondria could help infectious diseases like COVID, sepsis, influenza, etc. Okay, so the uh, the immune system is, is probably the area where this mitochondrial transplant is going to have the biggest effect, the soonest, because it turns out to be extremely simple so far to regenerate the strength of the immune system by giving you new mitochondria. And again, we use the thing called mitlets, which we've been working with extensively. Mitlets are mitochondria that are encased in uh, extracellular vesicles, and they're they're um, they're emitted by platelets. When the platelets reach the end of their life, they give off these mitochondria in these extracellular vesicles. And all the other immune components like the red blood, uh, white blood cells absorb these fresh mitochondria and use them to, to generate additional power. So if we can grow those in an external bioreactor and go into the ICU where someone who is elderly is trying to fight an infection, or maybe it's a younger person who's got an immune suppression or immune disease of some sort, we could give them uh, fresh, uh, more powerful mitochondria and help them get up and get out of that ICU. So that applies to sepsis and the flu and pneumonia and just about every infectious disease. So what about Alzheimer's and other neurodegenerative diseases? So neurodegenerative diseases are have been identified for some time as being based on mitochondria. Of course, the neurons use enormous amounts of energy. 20% of the energy in our body is used in the, in the brain to maintain all of those electrical potentials. And so as the, um, as the mitochondria degenerate and become less powerful, what happens, of course, is that it can't maintain all of those connections and it begins to lose its integrity which means we start to lose memories. We start to lose processing power in our brains. Also, there's a great deal of waste disposal that happens in the brain in order to keep all of these, these, these high function uh, neurons um, clean. And if that waste disposal isn't happening, again, because of lack of energy, then the neurons eventually begin to gum up and accumulate materials. The question is, if mitochondria are declining in the, in the body, why does one person get Alzheimer's and the other person, someone else might get Parkinson's? We think that is based on genetics. 
you're, when the energy levels in your body decline below a certain level, what happens is that these little genetic flaws begin to express themselves as disease. So one person is prone to Parkinson's, another person is prone to Alzheimer's, or maybe there was some environmental factor. But the key is if we could raise the energy levels of their bodies back up again, then we eliminate all these diseases with a single cure. So Tom, let's talk about eye diseases, blindness, that type of thing. So the retina is one of the, the highest energy users in the body, even more so than the brain, as it turns out. It's a very small tissue, so it's not a lot, it's not a lot of energy, but it's very high intensity. The reason is that those, uh, those uh, eye receptors are always on and they're always active and they're always ready to detect uh, you know, a threat. And so it, it makes sense then that they burn out relatively quickly. And by the time you get old, your, your, your vision starts to get a little gray. By the time you get very old, the mitochondrial energy levels in your eyes, according to some research, de decline 70, 75%. <clears throat> and so that just means that you start to, the cells in your photoreceptors start to degenerate. And that's what causes AMD, we believe. That's what causes glaucoma, maybe some other forms of eye disease. And so the, the solution to that is, of course, is to, to bolster those eye mitochondria with young mitochondria that have been grown in a bioreactor. And of course, the nice thing is that the eye is a very small tissue, so it doesn't take very much to get a big effect. So what about wrinkling, hair loss, appearance, that type of thing? Obviously, let's face it, a lot of us are very interested in those at a personal level. Yeah, but we get a lot of questions about uh, f facial skin. Let's face it, you know, how you're perceived by the world makes a big difference. And it, you don't have to be a Hollywood celebrity to, to want to have a young looking face. And people put enormous amounts of money and creams and facelifts and, and micro injections and all kinds of things that they've tried to keep their faces looking younger. And unfortunately, as we all learn eventually, at the end of the day, it all fades away and we just look old and it is a, it's a harsh thing. So <clears throat> the uh, a lot of that is mitochondrially based. Again, the body is rationing mitochondria. Facial appearance is not considered to be, from an evolutionary standpoint, to be that important to the survival of the species as we get older. And so uh, the skin and the hair and other parts of the, of the face uh, just begin to degenerate. They get less flexible. You lose the, um, the plump fat that's underneath and you lose muscle tone in the muscles. So the obvious answer to that is let's restore those mitochondria, put them back in there, younger, healthier mitochondria and regenerate all of those tissues get the fat to regenerate, get the muscles to be become strong again. And um, maybe there's the opportunity to, uh, to improve people's facial appearance without going through facelifts and these, these other uh, surgical intrusive um, uh, treatments. Well, Tom, that sounds very interesting. So thanks again for joining us today. Thank you, Phil, and, and appreciate doing these interviews with you.